collection, and this is the Colonial Virginia, written by Peter Pelham, who was the first organist of Bruton Parish and served there for 50 years during the colonial period. As part of our fifth grade history curriculum, we study the Constitution. This year, we are celebrating the 233rd anniversary of the signing of our nation's constitution with our reenactment. However, to set the stage, I'd like to take you back to the year 1781, six years before the signing of our constitution. In order to form a stronger union and government powerful enough to defeat Great Britain, the Articles of Confederation were ratified. These articles provided a loose confederation of the states, which were not very united. Up to this point, the states had been sovereign in most of their affairs, and Congress's powers were extremely limited. By 1786, it became apparent that the Union would soon break up if the Articles of Confederation were not amended or replaced. Now, on to our reenactment. The date is September 17, 1787. We are here today in Philadelphia to witness the signing of the Constitution. When the delegates first gathered here four long months ago, they were charged with the revising of the Articles of Confederation. Instead, a new framework of government was forged. The fact that is this Constitution was written has been called a miracle. Let us watch as the delegates sign the document. <laughs> I am James Madison. My home is the Mont Pillar I sit in Virginia. Since these United States won independence from the British, we have faced numerous challenges. Many of these problems have stemmed from the weaknesses in the Articles of Confederation. And that is why I worked so hard to arrange the convening of this Constitutional Convention. My Virginian plan was largely based in the final Constitution. During the Convention, I tirelessly advocated a strong government. I'm gratified that Republican principles dominate the new constitution. We have staked the whole future of American civilization, not upon the power of government, far from it. We have staked the whole future of our political institutions upon the capacity of mankind for self-government, upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to control ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. My name is Nathaniel Garma, Massachusetts. I was born into a family of modest means and my education was minimal. However, opportunity abounds in this country. After serving an apprenticeship, I established a business that quickly succeeded. During the revolution, British troops ravaged much of my property, though I managed to recoup most of my fortune. I am pleased to be a part of this constitutional convention. I have taken seriously this responsibility for developing a framework of government for our nation. In truth, I've not missed even one session. Now our work is finished and I'm quite satisfied with my results. My name is Robert Morris. I'm a delegate from Pennsylvania. I'm a businessman. During the War of Independence, I worked closely with General Washington, procuring money and supplies from the states, borrowing money in the face of overwhelming difficulties, and on occasion, even obtaining personal loans to further the war cause. Under this constitution, we will finally be able to have common currency. <laughs> My name 
name is John Blair. I am a lawyer from Williamsburg, Virginia. I have always been an active patriot. I took part in the Virginia <clears throat> Constitutional Convention and sat in the committee that framed the Virginia Declaration of Rights. I am pleased to sign this new framework of government for the United States and pray that it will be ratified by all the states in a timely manner. <laughs> I'm John Langdon, a merchant. My family obtained considerable wealth over six generations of living in New Hampshire. However, I placed my fortune in jeopardy for the cause of the revolution. I supplied arms and money to the Continental Army. I thank God for all he has done to bring us to this glorious day. I pray that he would always be pleased to keep this state under his most holy protection, that all in the legislature, executive, and judicial departments may be guided and supported by wisdom, integrity, and firmness, that all the people may be animated by a true estimation of their privileges and taught to secure by their patriotism and virtue what they have acquired by their valor. <laughs> William Samuel Johnson is my name. I'm a lawyer from Connecticut. My great great grandfather came to America in 1638. My father is an Anglican minister. Like my father, I believe he best serves his maker who does most good to his country and to mankind. I pray that God will always be glorified in this country, in this nation. I am William Patterson. I moved to this country from Ireland with my Presbyterian family when I was two years old. I attended Princeton University during a time when there was a strong evangelical movement. Twelve of my 18 classmates became ministers. I became a lawyer, and I've served my state of New Jersey in various capacities. I believe this constitution is based on the ideal that religion and morality are necessary to good government, good orders, and good laws. But when the Righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. My name is Roger Sherman. I am a lawyer from Connecticut. I signed the Articles of Association, the Declaration of Independence, and the Articles of Confederation. Now I am honored to sign the Constitution of the United States. Back in June, there was an almost fatal crisis in the convention. It was I who second a motion to enact Dr. Franken's request that our sessions be open with prayer each day. The heated dispute was over how we would ensure that the smaller states be fairly represented in comparison with the larger states. After Franklin's speech, I made the suggestion that representation in the Senate be equal and representation in the House be based on population. Now with the completed document before me, I can say this is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. <laughs> I'm the youngest signer of the Constitution, Jonathan Dayton, age 26. I'm a delegate from New Jersey. I believe the greatest moment of this convention was when Benjamin Franklin gave his monumental speech calling for the convention to be open daily with prayer. When he finished speaking, the doctor sat down. And never did I behold a countenance at once so dignified and delighted as was that of Washington, nor were the members of the convention generally less affected. The words of the venerable Franklin fell upon our ears with a weight and authority even greater that we may suppose an oracle to have had in a Roman Senate. <laughs> I'm Benjamin Franklin. 
distinguished for being the oldest of the delegates. Perhaps you're wondering about the speech referred to by my colleagues during the crisis that threatened to end this convention. I simply reminded the delegates that we are a source of hope, of which we have not yet availed ourselves to the fullest extent. I said, in this situation of assembly, groping as it were in order to find the political truth, how has it happened, sir, that we have not yet hitherto once thought of humbly applying the father of the lights to illuminate our understanding? In the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, we had daily prayer in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. To that kind providence, we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future national facility. And have we forgotten that powerful friend? I've lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of the truth that God governs the affairs of men. You have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I implored the delegates to approve a plan of beginning each session with prayer. I believe those prayers were answered, and we now have this constitution which we can all be pleased to sign. Alexander Hamilton here. During the revolution, I worked for independence and wrote pamphlets. I became captain of a New York artillery unit. I was honored when I was chosen by General George Washington to be retained as a staff lawyer. Later, I was promoted to lieutenant colonel. As I signed this constitution, I would like to impress upon you that, for my own part, I sincerely esteem it is a system which without the finger of God never could have been suggested and agreed upon by such diversity of interest. <laughs> Governor Morris, an attorney from Pennsylvania. As head of the Committee on Style, I penned the final draft of the Constitution. I was the originator of the phrase, we the people of the United States. Today, I would especially like to address those of you who are here, our students and teachers. Religion is the only solid basis of good morals. Therefore, education should teach precepts of religion and the duties of man toward God. These duties are internally love and adoration, externally devotion and obedience. But each one has the right to entire liberty as to religious opinions, for the religion is a relation between God and man. Therefore, it is not within the reach of human authority. <laughs> of Georgia. I am an attorney and an educator. I believe that civil order should be the result of choice and not necessity. And the common wishes of the people become the laws of the land. Their public prosperity and even existence very much depend upon forming the minds and morals of their citizens. It can only be happy when the public principles and opinions are properly directed and manners regulated. This is an influence beyond the reach of laws and punishments and can be claimed only by religion and education. My name is George Reed of Delaware. I was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. I was responsible for writing the Delaware Constitution, which includes this pledge to be said by all who would hold public office. I do profess faith in God the Father and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, and in the Holy Ghost, one God, blessed forever. And I do acknowledge all the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be given by divine inspiration. As we elect our country's leaders, I implore you to choose Christian statesmen of excellent moral character. I am Jane Dickens, a physician and researcher from Maryland. The U.S. military 
Academy at West Point was established under my supervision. I served on the General Washington in the medical staff during the Revolution War. I was president for the first five of the CIA in Baltimore. This document before me was written for publication of Bible readers for about the Bible. We increased penal laws and draw entrenchment around our intuition. Bibles are strong entrenchments. Where they abound, men cannot cannot curse wicked courses and at the same time keep a quiet conscience. <laughs> My name is John Dickinson. I am a lawyer and a planter. I am a delegate from Delaware, but I have also lived in Pennsylvania where I founded a college. I plan to do everything in my power to have this constitution ratified and for it become the law of the land. This system of government is unique because it is based on the idea that the right essentials to happiness we claim from our higher source, King of Kings and the Lord of all earth. <laughs> Jacob Broom is my name, and I am a delegate from Delaware. I am a banker, an entrepreneur, a farmer, and a merchant. I am a God-fearing man, and I thank him for the opportunity to be here at this moment in history. This document before me has had God's hand upon it, and I am pleased to sign it. My name is Hugh Williamson of North Carolina. I'm a former Presbyterian preacher, a medical doctor, a land speculator, a writer, and scientist. I often join with Dr. Franklin in his electrical experiments. By the way, have you read my book? It is entitled Observations of the Climate in Different Parts of America. It provides a scientific explanation for the credibility of the Holy Scriptures in regards to Noah's flood and the events of Moses' exodus. Well, I'm not here to promote my book but the Zionist Constitution, a most momentous occasion. I am Charles Cotteris Pitney, second cousin of fellow signer Charles Pitney, also of North Carolina. I'm a lawyer, a planter, and a statesman. During the revolution, I was a brigadier general. Today, this document mirrors my own philosophy, for, I, uh, for as I often say, the great art of government is not to govern too much. Nicholas Gilman. I served as a captain during the revolution and now a, and now a delegate from New Hampshire. I was a, I'm a merchant just as my father has been before me. This is my honor and pleasure to sign the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> Jersey. I am a graduate of Princeton College and a lawyer. I was unanimously elected member of this grand convention meeting here in Philadelphia. My experience during the war for independence taught me that only a constitutionally based government can guarantee that the nation's military forces remain properly subordinate to the elected leaders. Thereby protecting the rights of our citizens, I am pleased to affix my name on this character of our liberties.
William Fear is my name. I am from Georgia and consider myself a self-made man. My family endured great hardship while I was young. I am self-taught and was able to become a lawyer. I have been involved in Georgia's politics since the revolution. This constitution will finally unite a permanent union which we have so desperately needed. My name is Daniel Carroll. I'm a Maryland planter of Irish Catholic descent, and I am I've been involved in politics for some time, and I am more than satisfied that this constitution is superior to any found in the world today. I am Jared Ingersoll of Pennsylvania. I'm a Yale graduate and a lawyer. I've long favored the revision of the Articles of Confederation, so it is gratifying to see this constitution in its final form. My name is Thomas Mifflin, a representative of Pennsylvania. I am a Pacific Quaker by background, but choose to serve in the military during the revolution, rising to the rank of Major General. I believe that in the premises, that power alone is just which is adapted to the public good. There can be no right to power, except what is either found upon or speedily obtains the hearty consent of the body of the people. And finally, General George Washington will address those assembled here. As president over the proceedings here during the last four months, it would be peculiarly improper to omit on this day. My fervent supplications to that almighty being who rules over the universe who presides in the councils of nations, that his benediction may consecrate to the liberties of the people of the United States. No people can be bound to acknowledge the invisible hand which conducts the affairs of men more than the people of the United States. Every step by which they have advanced to an independent nation seems to have been distinguished by some token of providential agency. You will join with me. I trust in thinking that there are none under which the proceedings of a new and free government can more auspiciously commence. The foundations of our national policy will be laid in the immutable principles of private morality and the preeminence of free government be exemplified by all the attributes which can win the affections of its citizens and command the respect of the world. We ought, to be no less, we, we ought to be no less persuaded that the smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right, which heaven itself has ordained. And since the preservation of the sacred fire of liberty and the destiny of the Republican model of government are considered as deeply staked in the experiment entrusted to the hands of the American people, let us pray. Almighty God. We make our earnest prayer that thou will keep the United States in thy holy protection, that thou will incline the hearts of its citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government, and entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens, and that thou wilt most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, and to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion. And with that, a humble imitation of whose example in these things, we can never hope to be a happy nation. Grant our supplication, we beseech thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
The fifth grade class would like to thank you for joining us today. We would also like to thank Mrs. Heilman and Ms. Mitchell for their help. We hope that you've enjoyed watching our reenactment as much as we enjoyed presenting it to you. In your classrooms, you will be signing your own classroom constitutions. George Washington once said, it is impossible to govern the world without God and the Bible. The same principle applies to our classrooms. I'd like to leave you with the words of the preamble to our constitution. As you sign your own classroom constitutions, you are agreeing on the same principles for your classroom that the signers of the Constitution agreed upon for our country. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Thank you.